Once upon a time, flying on a plane was considered a civilized, genteel activity. People would come looking dapper in suits and dresses and have full course meals. They also crashed a lot more. Mm -hmm. So in our modern era, uh, we have traded up in flight safety but traded down in style and class. Mm -hmm. Modern flights are full of ungodly horrors that remind you constantly that human man is the most disgusting beast of all. Mm -hmm. So today, we're gonna play a game where Rhett you have to guess what horrible thing is happening on a plane. It's time for I've had it with these mother flipping chains on these mother flipping planes. For the movie reference. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna show you a partially blacked out image of uh, taking on a flight. Okay. Uh, okay. And then I'm gonna give you multiple choice options. You're gonna have to guess what is happening that is shameful on this plane. If you get three or more right, you win these travel friendly compression socks. Oh wow. Touch them. Yeah. I've been having lots of clots. Well, yeah, that's it's a very can, clotty day for me. You can't me. keep them, but you can you can hold them right there. Okay. It just it it just it keeps the blood from pooling. Right. In you the don't bottom. Want that. You don't want the blood pooling. Okay. First up, we all know time spent on a plane is monotonous. People choose to either read a book, watch a movie, or listen to a podcast. But what did this guy choose to do? Oh gosh. Mm hmm. <laughs> A, did he choose to trim his beard with scissors, perform a flute solo, power through some corn on the cob, or vomit up a snake? <laughs> uh, vomiting up a snake, not a euphemism for anything. Um, I feel like I would see the flute, I would see the flute protruding if it were a flute, because flutes protrude, that's one of the good things, one of the things they're good at. You know what I love about a flute? the way it protrudes. Corn on the cob would not be served on the plane. You'd have to bring that in like your own baggie, which I wouldn't put it past this guy. Nope. But I think he's trimming his beard with scissors, something I've thought about at times on planes. A. All right, remove the censorship. Oh, that's a, it's not protruding. He is a flautist, man. Ah. Uh. And remember, in the event of an emergency, make sure you blow your own flute before blowing other people's <laughs> Right. Also in the event of an emergency, save this guy last. Hmm. Oh, you know what, he, he, he plays you out as you're all about to die, just like on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I want a flute solo right before I go. All right, so this may be tougher than, than you thought, huh? Yeah, because the flute didn't protrude. Next, we've got a restless cabin member. What is he doing? Holy is it moly. A, performing a rigorous set of aerobic air humping hip thrusts? Yeah. B, balancing cups full of coke on his thighs? C, yelling at a baby to be quiet? Or D, farting the alphabet? Mm. All we have we have video proof. Oh, this will become a video? This will become a video. Oh, wow, okay. If that's a hint, use it as you will. Well, it, it, it makes C possible. Yelling at a baby to be quiet mm -hmm. makes C possible. Golly. He looks like he's in a vigorous uh, air humping, hip thrusting posture. Cause I, you know, from time to time we'll do that on a plane. Cause a big man like me. You'd have no room to hip thrust. No, yeah, no, no. The problem is, is that you, the, you, you, you start, you lose your flexibility, but with the hip thrust, your knees s stay in the same place. And so you actually, <laughs> You actually have more room than you think. That's, is one, he, is that's, he one, of the, that's one of the ways to, for big men like me to keep from clotting when you don't have compression socks. Something I won't done? have to worry about anymore. But I think he's- Is he seated? I, th I think he's yelling at a baby. Okay. I think he's yelling at a baby. All right, let's find out. Oh God. <laughs> Those, sir, are <laughs> hip thrusts. Oh gosh. Oh <laughs> wow, this guy. yeah. Uh, Who knew they had that type of VR on a plane now? I should have known. Hold on, you think he's- is he doing it to the rhythm of what he's listening to? Yeah, he just joined the Mile High Club all by himself. <laughs> Maybe he misunderstands what the back of that seat is for. Yeah. Virgin Airlines has to change their name now. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Uh. Okay, you've got to get the next three right yeah, in order to have good. a chance not of getting these good. socks, man. Okay, when you step on a plane, you're given a few key amenities. A light that shines on other people when they're trying to sleep, a scratchy blanket, and an ineffective personal fan. Huh. I've got someone trying to use a seat feature in a creative way. What are these outstretched hands up to? Is it A, cooling down a tuna sandwich? B, drying out a pair of underwear? C, blowing the lint out of a sock? Or D, holding up their baby for a sexy wind-blown baby photo shoot? Hmm. That'd be a little baby. A, a newborn 
with a lot of hair. Well, interesting, if you're cooling down a tuna sandwich in that way, you're also like dispersing the smell of tuna around <laughs> the cabin, which- It's never stopped anybody. I gotta say, as much as I have hated people before for opening up fish meals, not too recently, I had a tuna sandwich, a tuna melt on a plane. You did? Yeah. And as I was breaking it out, I was like, oh no, I'm that guy. Did and you I, hold it up to the? And I hated myself for it. So you think that's what's happening here too? Make no. you feel better? Nope. Uh, so what is it? I don't know, that'd be a little piece of, that'd be a little underwear too. I don't know, sure. Tuna, no. Tuna snow? <laughs> tuna, yeah, tuna. All right, remove it. That is a pair of underwear. Uh, Gosh. Well, they're dispersing the smell of that underwear around too. Uh, oh, wow. It's probably, it's probably effective though. I'm going to go for the negative queen sweep now. I know, you have to. I get to keep these. Yep, congratulations. Kind of like a scarf now. All right. All right, I want to focus on things passengers left behind. What did this flight attendant discover that is being held up? Is it a clear baggie filled with A, snakeskin? B, dog poop, C, human urine, or D, placenta juice from Goop's new juice box line. Oh. <laughs> Interesting products, that Goop. Would she hold up a bag of human urine without a glove? I've been in a situation before where I needed to pee, and then they're like, you can't get up, sir, because it's too late. Um, I just, like, reabsorbed it. You know how you can do that? You like find your second bladder. You got a second bladder? I don't know, sometimes you gotta pee real bad and then you like concentrate and I feel like it just goes <sighs> into another bubble somewhere. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, but I can see if you don't have that special ability, you would pee in a bag. So I'm gonna say snakeskin. Okay. <laughs> He's saying snakeskin to intentionally get it wrong. Let's see if he is successful at being wrong. Yes. That is human urine, I, and I, get, I guess you're right. I mean, sometimes you'd yeah. rather not tap a person on the shoulder, you'd just rather pee in a bag right beside them. Uh, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. You, you don't wanna inconvenience anybody. Who's to say that you knew that bag was gonna be big enough? That's the thing I always worried about when I'm peeing in a bag. Is this bag big enough? Mm, yep, That's, that would be a lot of pee. Okay, Rep, for the negative queen sweep, we've got an elderly woman seated in front of a passenger who snapped this photo. What was poking over the top of the seat? Was it the elderly lady's own feet in a surprising act of geriatric flexibility? Mm. The elderly lady's emotional support ferret eating lettuce off of her head? Oh, wow. The elderly lady's unfortunate shaped personal massager? Aye. Or D, the elderly lady super rad AARP beer helmet. Mm, wow, all of these would be fun. And I'm looking at the caption, you're so confused right now with this old lady in front of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I feel like you wouldn't talk about a ferret. You wouldn't, you knew, you know what a ferret is doing because you can see it, so that wouldn't confu confuse you. I feel like the correct answer is A, the flexibility, but I'm gonna go with B because I feel like it's incorrect for the negative queen sweep. Okay, let's find out. Yes, yes. good gosh, look at the- Holy, what? <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Wow. I mean, bloop, and then <laughs> spreads them. Golly. They say senior homes are rife with STDs. Yes. I'm now beginning to understand why. Uh huh. <laughs> Maybe she's doing FaceTime with somebody on the other. Uh, other. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's not the face. Okay, Rhett, so you have the negative queen sweep. Congratulations. Woo! You you get. Yeah. You don't, I get whipped. <laughs> you get whipped no. with the compression socks. Like, yeah, but I, I get to keep I'll wear those. Them as a scarf. All right, listen. Be decent on a plane, people. Come on. And thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is. I'm Coral. I'm Salu. We're about to land in Orlando International Airport coming home from Ireland. And it's time to spin the wheel of ethicality. They're on a plane! <laughs> They're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> click the bottom link to watch this episode from the beginning. And click the top link to watch us guess Mythical Crew members' secret talents in Good Mythical Mar. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. We're taking the Tour of Mythicality to Australia. Get tickets and details on the VIP package at tourmythicality.com.